Hey everyone, it's Nell with Little Yellow House Crafts. Welcome back to my channel. This video is going to be a little bit different um, from my normal videos about stitching because this video is all about Disney World. <laughs> if you are not interested in Disney World, if you are not a Disney person, no worries. Go ahead and click out of this video. I will catch you in my next video where I'll be talking about stitching as usual. But I asked a couple of videos ago if there were people who are interested in hearing about my husband's and my trip to Disney World and that I would make a video with tips and tricks and ways to save money and things that we really prioritize. And so that's what this is. If you're interested, stay tuned. I don't know that this is going to be a super long video, but here we go. So I have my iPad here with the My Disney Experience app on here so that I have all of our plans so I can reference them. Um, I have been going to Disney Park since I was little. I grew up in a Disney family. Both of my parents were born and raised in Southern California. My mom especially, she grew up in like Orange County area and she used to go to Disney all the time. In fact, her father, my grandfather, was a member of Club 33 back in the 60s and 70s, okay? Now, please bear in mind, Club 33 back in those days was not nearly as expensive nor as exclusive as it is now. But my mom has childhood memories of actually having Thanksgiving dinner in the park in Walt's apartment. Okay, they they were in the Walt's apartment area. They each had a personal butler giving them their food. She remembers it being super fancy. So that is the family that I grew up in. So I realized that not everyone grows up in a diehard Disney family. I did. <laughs> I grew up diehard Disney, right? And then, you know, after, when I was in my teenage years, my family actually moved from California to Florida and we started going to Disney World and love Disney World as well. My Most of my childhood, though, was spent at Disneyland. I didn't start going to Disney World until I was older, until I was a teenager um, because of where we lived. But I love both parks and I have a very strong love for Disney World now for reasons you'll hear about in just a second. But I did. I grew up in a Disney family. We used to go at least every other year when we could afford it. And it was always we had family reunions there. It was a big deal. Fast forward to me getting engaged to my wonderful husband and we were talking about where we wanted to go on our honeymoon and I told him that I wanted to go to Disney World on our honeymoon and he didn't really get it, okay? He had never been to a Disney park, he did not grow up in a Disney family and it took some convincing. Finally, I convinced him, you know, we were going to be doing a reception in Florida anyway because that's where my family was living at the time. And so we might as well go to Disney World on our honeymoon. And so my loving husband, in an effort to please me, bought us tickets and we went to Disney World on our honeymoon. And I will say this, by lunchtime on the first day in Disney World, my husband looked at me, totally straight faced, looked at me and said, this is the best place I've ever been in my entire life. <laughs> And you got to bear in mind, my husband has lived all over the world. He grew up in an, a military family. He's been a lot of cool places. And he was like, this is the best place I've ever been in my whole life. So he's fully on board with being a Disney family as well. So we, we are a Disney family. We will always be a Disney family and we love it. I know that some people don't really get why two adults would choose to spend their 10 year anniversary at Disney World. But it's okay. You don't have to get it. We love it. It's where we spent our honeymoon, which is why it makes the whole 10 year anniversary thing feel very special that we're going back there where we honeymooned. And yeah, so we are going to Disney World. We are going in May, um, the first week of May. And I'm so excited. It's only two weeks away now and it still feels... By the time you see this video, it will be one week away because I'm filming this a week early. I cannot wait. I'm so excited. We've been planning it for over a year. We've had to keep changing the dates of our trips because of COVID and the park closures and all of this. We've just been trying to figure it out. We finally got our dates pinned down about six months ago. We decided to go in May, so we changed our, our trip to May. Um, when our 60-day window opened up, we went ahead and got all our dining reservations, which I'll talk about, and all of that. So let's first start with our, our trip plans. We will be spending six days in the park. We will have six 
park passes, six tickets. We are doing the park hopper option, which has come back. If you don't speak Disney, park hopper means that your ticket is a little more expensive, but allows you to change parks. And before COVID, it used to be that you could change parks whenever you wanted. Your park hopper meant that you weren't tied to one park per day. You could go wherever you wanted any day of your trip. That is no longer the case because of COVID, but the park hopper does allow you to change to a new park after 1 or 2 p.m. I can't remember. And so we did want to do that because we want to have flexibility since we have six days. There may be some days that we don't have anything left to do in one park and we want to be able to hop to another park. Um, but that being said, we have six days in the parks. Right now we are planning to do one day in each of the four theme parks with an extra day in Magic Kingdom and an extra day in Hollywood Studios since those two are the busiest parks and have the most rides and the most likelihood we might not be able to get everything done the first day. So, but again, those, those two extra days at Magic Kingdom and Hollywood Studios, we could end up at Epcot, we could end up back at Animal Kingdom, we could end up at Disney Springs, who knows? We could end up back at our hotel, lying by the pool. <laughs> we, we don't know. We're keeping it super chill. Um, because this is a grown-ups only trip, we decided we wanted to stay in a nice hotel. And we wanted to stay on Disney property. Now, if you know anything about Disney World resorts, on property resorts, you know that the deluxe resorts, which are their nicest resorts, are crazy, stupid, expensive. I'm not talking like a couple hundred dollars a night. I'm talking like bottom of the line at the Polynesian Resort or the Grand Floridian is like $600 a night for their smallest, least preferred rooms. You can go to well over $1,000 a night in a deluxe resort at Disney World, and there's no way in heck that we can afford that. So we decided to do this trip for the first time, we decided to rent DVC points. If you are familiar with DVC, DVC stands for Disney Vacation Club, and DVC is the Disney version of a timeshare. People can buy properties in DVC at a certain resort, um, whether at Disney World or Disneyland or in Hawaii or a couple other places, doesn't matter. They can buy a certain number of points at a certain resort and use them towards stays at Disney World whenever, okay? It's a timeshare, basically. It's a little different in some ways, but mostly it's just a timeshare. The thing about those points, though, is that they are non-refundable. And for people who have Disney Vacation Club contracts, if there's a year where they're not going to use all their points, it's a total waste of money because that's money that you've already spent and you can't get it back. So what a lot of people do, similar to some timeshares, is that they will then what they call in Disney speak as renting their points to someone else. They're basically selling their, their points to someone. And you don't have to be a DVC member to rent points. Did you know that? You can be a regular old Joe or Jane, run of the mill regular person and you can rent DVC points. There are a couple of things you wanna be wary of when you're using DVC points. I'm not going to get into all that. There are whole YouTube videos about how to rent DVC points and tips and tricks. Go, go watch those. Those people are experts. Just know that there are a couple of important things to remember when you're renting DVC points. Be sure you are renting them from either a broker, an authorized, like, or not authorized, but like a broker who does a lot of this. Things like Dave's DVC Rentals. Um, there are websites where you can actually pay a small fee to them for brokering the deal because you're working with private parties. You're not working with Disney, okay? And there is the potential for scams. So if you're renting DVC points, please be smart. We chose not to go through a brokerage. I chose to go to one of the, the DVC like um, forums, boards. I think we went to Disney, Dis boards, or I can't remember where I went. Um, and there's, there's entire forums for people buying and selling DVC points. And so I just went through a private party. This is a lady who's done tons of these. She has like over a hundred DVC rental transactions to her name. She's got properties at like four different places at Disney World. She knew what she was doing. And I felt 
reasonably comfortable transacting with her. Um, but basically what you can do is you can rent people's DVC points for a Disney World on property stay for much less than you would pay rack rate. And rack rate is Disney speak for the price that's listed on, D on Disney's website. So if you go to disneyworld.com and you look up a, a studio room, meaning like a one, a two person room, I think they sleep up to three, but basically a two person room at the Grand Floridian, you're gonna be quoted $750 a night. If you purchase DVC points from someone, you might be paying closer to three, 320, 350 a night. It's still expensive. Let's be real, $300 a night is an expensive hotel but it's not 750 okay? So my husband and I talked about it. We decided we wanted to stay at a deluxe resort. We hopped on the disboards. We, we found someone we were willing to work with who had the points that we needed and in the right place. And she was able to get us a reservation for the week at Disney's Polynesian, which is one of their deluxe resorts. The Polynesian um, is, is not their oldest deluxe resort. I'm pretty sure the contemporary was their first resort in the Magic Kingdom area. And I think the Polynesian was their second. I think it was built in the 70s. It's been refurbished since then. It's an extremely nice hotel. It's beautiful, Polynesian themed. The, the Moana rooms are getting refurbished right now to be Moana themed. Anyway, really nice hotel on the monorail loop right by Magic Kingdom. And so we decided yes. So we are staying at Disney's Polynesian. If you are interested to know this, we are paying about two seventy five three hundred a night it the the weekend nights are more expensive than the weekday nights so average is probably around 290 a night which for the Polynesian is a really good deal okay um we've saved we saved about two thousand dollars by renting DVC points rather than using Disney's rack rates now Disney does sometimes run like offers where they, you know, you can get 35% off a deluxe room reservation, but even 35% off is not as good as what we got. Ours is closer to like 50% off by renting DVC points. So just, yeah, yeah, it was huge savings. And we're staying at a very nice hotel. Um, one other thing though, to keep in mind with DVC point rentals is that they are non-refundable. Unlike Purchasing rooms direct through Disney where you can cancel up to like the night before you're supposed to arrive. DVC um, rent like DVC reservations, whether you are an owner or you're renting points, are non-refundable. And so what we did is after we purchased our, our points and we and we had the, the lady who was the DVC member make our reservation for us, we actually went ahead and purchased private trip insurance. It costs about $150 for both my husband and I. Yes, it's $150, but it just gave us peace of mind to know that if for some reason we couldn't make our reservation, if COVID got bad again and they had to shut down the parks, if you know, fill in the blank, if one of us got sick or one of our kids was sick or something and we couldn't make it, or my husband's work, like for some reason something happened and he couldn't go, we could get refunded 100% of what we paid for our room. So you've got to make that decision for yourself. If it's a last minute whirlwind trip and you know you're going, then don't worry about the trip insurance. If you're leaving next week, you probably don't need it. But we booked our trip way back in like November. And so it, it made us feel more comfortable to purchase that private trip insurance. And 150 bucks between the two of us when you're going to Disney, let's be real, that's a drop in the bucket. <laughs> it's an expensive vacation, okay? It's our 10 year anniversary. We're staying at a nice hotel. So anyway, we're staying at the Polynesian. If you're interested in more information about how to rent DVC points to stay at nicer hotels for cheaper, go find YouTube videos about them. There are people who are experts in this. I am not. But anyway, that's what we're doing for our hotel. And because it's also a grown-up trip, not only did we want to stay in a posh hotel with a nice pool and close to transportation and all of that, but we also wanted to prioritize dining on this trip. Um, Fast Pass is still not a thing at Disney World, so you have to just wait in line for all the rides. 
it is still reduced capacity for how much longer nobody really knows but it will still be at some kind of reduced capacity when we go i think right now it's at 35 percent there has been some talk on the rumor mills that they might be increasing the capacity either in may or june some people think the beginning of may which would affect our trip some people think like um memorial day weekend so end of may which would not affect our trip regardless it's at reduced capacity right now and you just have to wait in line for everything we don't mind we have plenty of time and we have no little kids so we can wait but because there's no fast pass to plan there's no parades really there's no fireworks we decided we wanted to prioritize dining we are foodies we love to eat good food and so we did so i'm going to run you through what we decided to do for our dining reservations right now dining reservations open 60 days out from your first day at the park um, if you are staying on property um, i think it's actually 60 days out for everybody but if you are staying on property, you can make all your reservations for your entire Disney trip on the 60 day window from your first day there. Does that make sense? You don't have to make a, a reservation every day for how many days long your trip is. You can make them all at once that first day that you hit the 60 day window. And so I did, I woke up in the wee hours of the morning and got my computer set up and my clicking finger ready because some of these reservations are hard to get. Um, especially right now with reduced capacity and not all the restaurants open. So we did a lot of work to plan out where we wanted to eat each night and all of that. Couple of things about my husband and I, neither of us eats breakfast. We're not big breakfast eaters. Um, so we are planning on having two meals a day. We'll have an early lunch, maybe around 11 every day, and then we will have a dinner. And if we get hungry in the middle of the day, we'll get snacks because there's snacks to be had in abundance at Disney World. We will not be going hungry. So our first day that we fly in, our arrival day, we do not have a park reservation. We will fly in, we will check into our hotel, and then we'll head over to Disney Springs to wander around. Disney Springs is like the shopping and dining district at Disney World. You don't need a ticket. It's not a theme park. It's just shopping and dining. So locals go all the time. There's lots of good restaurants, lots of great shopping. We will head over to Disney Springs and we will be having dinner at the Boathouse. The Boathouse is one of their like fine dining locations at Disney Springs. We've never eaten there. I'm so excited. Um, and we'll be eating at the Boathouse our first night. Our first day in the parks, we will be at Magic Kingdom. We um, have our park passes to Magic Kingdom that day. Also, if you're not aware, right now you don't only have to purchase a ticket, you also have to make a park pass reservation, which just means, you know, you can buy a six, six day ticket with park hopper option. That's what we did. But not only that, you also have to specify which park you plan to attend each day and make your reservation because of capacity stuff. So our first day in the parks, we will be at Magic Kingdom and we decided to have dinner at Be Our Guest, which is inside the Beast's Castle, the Beauty and the Beast Castle. Um, it's a very fancy dinner. It's very expensive, but we've never eaten inside Beast Castle before and I think Last time we were at Disney World, I don't think this was even finished being built yet. We The last time we went was in 2011, so 10 years ago for our honeymoon. We've been to Disneyland since then, but we haven't been back to Disney World. So I think this is, I don't think it existed when we were there for our honeymoon. So we're having dinner at Be Our Guest. Um, we have a dinner reservation at 720, so we will have our dinner um, if you've ever been to Disney World and you've been to Be Our Guest. Where should, which room should we ask to eat in? <laughs> there are apparently three rooms you can eat in. There's the main ballroom, which is the biggest. It's the room where Beast and Butte and Belle danced. Um, there is the West Wing, which is the Beast's wing, and it's all torn up and dark. And then I think there's another wing, there's another room. It's like the library, I want to say, or something. Anyway, leave a comment down below, because when we show up for our reservation, we want to request to sit in a certain room. So tell us where we should sit. Right now I'm leaning towards the West Wing, but if you have a different recommendation, let me know. Our second day at Disney World, we will be at Animal Kingdom. We love Animal Kingdom and we are planning on having dinner 
a late lunch, early dinner at Yak and Yeti, um, the the restaurant, the sit down restaurant. Yak and Yeti does have a like a to go window where you can get like quick service type food. Quick service is Disney speak for like fast food. Um, but Yak and Yeti also has a sit down restaurant that's supposed to be very good. Again, we've never eaten there. We're really excited. So we will be having an early dinner at 415. I haven't decided yet if I want to keep that or move it to a lunch reservation. I haven't decided yet. But regardless, we're planning on eating at Yak and Yeti when we're at Disney um, Animal Kingdom. We'll probably have lunch at Satouli Canteen, probably, when we're there. Or maybe Flame Tree Barbecue. Uh, we haven't decided yet. We have some favorites. Our lunch at... Uh, at Magic Kingdom the day before will probably be at Pico Spill. I love Columbia Harbor House, but it's not open yet, unfortunately. So we'll probably go to Pico Spill, but anyway. And day two is Animal Kingdom. At Yak and Yeti, we'll be having dinner. Day three is Epcot. And we are going to, um, for our dinner, we're having a late dinner at 7.20 again, and we will be eating at Le Cellier which is in the Canada Pavilion. It's a very fancy steakhouse. We both love steak and yeah. We decided to make it a late dinner though because when we are at Epcot, it will be the Flower and Garden Festival and there will be food booths galore to try. So we aren't really eating at any specific place for lunch. We are planning on snacking our way through World Showcase all day long, and then we'll have a late dinner at Le Cellier at 7.20 before we head back to our hotel. So that is Epcot. Day four, we will be at Hollywood Studios, and we are planning on having our dinner at the Hollywood Brown Derby, which is, again, the fine dining location at... Um, Hollywood Studios. Again, we've never eaten there before. A lot of these are really fancy restaurants and so we've never eaten them before, eaten there before because either we didn't have the money for it or we were with kids. So we are eating at the Hollywood Brown Derby um, at 7, 6.55 but 7. And our lunch that day will likely be, I don't know, I've been dying to try Ronto Roasters which is a, a food cart in uh, Galaxy's Edge, the new Star Wars land. And I'm really excited to try those. So we will probably eat lunch there is my guess, but who knows? If we're feeling nostalgic, we might go to like the primetime TV cafe or like the the drive-in um, the drive-in movie theater, di the dine-in movie theater. I can't remember what it's called. We'll see, but it's probably gonna be Ronto Roasters that day because I'm dying to try one. And then Hollywood Brown Derby for dinner. And then our fifth day, we have a park pass reservation to go back to Magic Kingdom. We probably won't spend the whole day there, but our dinner that evening will actually be at California Grill, which is the fine dining restaurant at the top of Disney's Contemporary Resort. So it is in the, it's on the monorail loop, same as our hotel. So it will be very easy to get there, whether we're in Magic Kingdom or somewhere else, we'll probably head back to our hotel, change into some nicer clothes because they do have a, a dress code at <laughs> California Grill and then take the monorail over to the Contemporary Resort and have dinner at the top of Disney's Contemporary Resort at California Grill. Then our last day at Disney World, we have a park pass reservation to go back to Hollywood Studios again just in case we don't get a boarding group for Rise of the Resistance the first day. We wanted to give ourselves a second day just to be safe, um, but we will be back at Hollywood Studios for the morning at least, and then who knows where we'll end up, but our dinner that night is back at Disney Springs. We'll be heading back to Disney Springs, the shopping and dining district, and we'll be having dinner at Homecoming, which is um, one of the newer restaurants in Disney Springs. It's insanely popular. It's really hard to get a reservation for dinner. It's um, like comfort food, Southern food. Um, and uh, the, who's the guy, the chef? I can't remember his name right now. It's escaping me. It's his restaurant. He used to be the private chef for Oprah. He's kind of a big deal. And this is his like Southern um, southern cooking, so fried chicken and okra and delicious things, grits and all of that deliciousness. So we will be having dinner our last night at Homecoming in Disney Springs. Our last, Art Smith, that's his name, Art Smith's Homecoming. 
Our last day in Disney World is our departure day. We do not have a park reservation for that day, but we are going to make an exemption to our usual not eating breakfast rule because we wanted to go ahead and have breakfast that morning in our resort at the Polynesian at the Kona Cafe. Kona Cafe is a restaurant in the Polynesian Resort. It's one of the best breakfasts you can get on property. It's delicious. We're so excited. I'm so excited to get tongue Tonga toast. Tonga toast is a a French toast, a deep fried French toast that they serve at Kona Cafe with bananas and it's just so good. So we will be having breakfast at our resort before we catch our um, bus back to the airport to come home that day. So those are our Disney plans. Uh, leave a comment below if you have good or bad things to say about any of the restaurants where we're we're going to be eating at we're going to be spending a lot of money on food this trip but we decided we are not going to want to eat at any of these restaurants with our kids anytime soon a because it's so expensive and b because they're kind of fancy restaurants and i don't really want to bring all my little boys to fancy restaurants so we decided to go for fine dining this trip and we are spending a lot of money to do it but shockingly i calculated it out and I know the Disney dining plan hasn't come back yet. <clears throat> Sorry, I've been filming videos for hours now. Um, the Disney dining plan hasn't come back yet, but in order to eat at all the restaurants we are choosing to eat at, we would need the Disney deluxe dining plan. And by not using the dining plan and just making, like doing it all ourselves, we're actually saving several, several hundred dollars. I don't think the dining plan is worth it for us um, just because we don't eat breakfast. So we wouldn't be able to use all of our food credits and it just, it would be a waste of money for us. But I do have a tip here. This is not a new tip. This is a fairly common tip you'll hear, but it helps you feel more like you're at an all-inclusive resort, like an all-inclusive trip. If you, before you go, calculate out what your food and souvenir budget is and purchase Disney gift cards in advance of your trip. For some reason, handing a Disney gift card to a waiter feels like it feels psychologically less, oh my gosh, this dinner is so expensive. It feels less stressful than handing them a gift card that's already prepaid. Does that make sense? And we have we have the um, American Express Blue Cash Preferred credit card. So we get 6% cash back um, at grocery stores. And so I bought all of our Disney gift cards at our local uh, Kroger grocery store. So we got 6% cash back on all of that money that we spent for our dining for the week and we just went ahead and bought gift cards for our entire trip. So we won't be actually using our real credit cards, um, which it's still the same amount of money, but it feels psychologically more relaxing to hand a prepaid gift card than your credit card when they're charging you $150 for your dinner. So just a little tip, we are looking forward to doing it that way. I think it'll be less stressful and make the whole trip a lot more relaxing for us. Last, so we've talked about where we're staying, we've talked about our plans, we've talked about our dining. Last thing, growing up in a Disney family, I do have a few little tips and tricks um, if you are a newbie to going to Disney. Um, these tips apply to everyone, but especially if you are going with no children, because, and I cannot emphasize this enough, you want to pack light. Do not bring a giant, like, backpack full of stuff. You don't need it. Disney has literally everything you need, okay? Don't worry about bringing medicines. If you get a headache while you're in the park, head to the first aid. There's a first aid in every park and they'll give you ibuprofen, Tylenol, whatever you need, okay? Obviously, if you know you're going to need certain medications, then bring your prescriptions, but don't stress about things like that. They have stuff in the parks available for their guests. But I do have a couple of tips. This is my park bag. It is a crossbody like saddle type bag. It's very small, okay? It's lightweight and it's waterproof because you're in Florida and it will rain at least one day that you're there. One thing I love about it is that inside it has a space for my cards. I don't even have to bring a separate wallet. I can bring a gift card to pay for all of our stuff that day. I can bring my photo ID 
and that's really all I need while you're at Disney World. You don't need a credit card if you've got your gift cards. You may want to bring one credit card just in case something goes wrong with your Disney gift card. I mean, it's good to have backup forms of payment, but you don't need to bring your whole wallet, okay? Just your ID, your gift cards, and your credit card. That's all you need. Um, you are, so pack light, first of all. Anything that doesn't fit in here, leave it in your hotel room. Next, magic bands. We're choosing to use magic bands. They have the option nowadays to skip magic bands altogether. We find magic bands to be very convenient, easy to use. This one's mine. It's like vintage Disney. There's Mickey and the castle and Dumbo. And on the other side, there's a bunch of the rides. Peter Pan, Splash Mountain, Big Thunder Mountain, Space Mountain, and Pirates. Some of my favorite classic rides. So that's mine. And this is my husband's. His is just gray and it says Disney Dad. Mickey and then Mickey's on the other side so we're choosing to use magic bands again because then we can charge things to our room if we need to it's our room key it's our ticket into the parks it just makes things easier we don't have to be pulling our phones out for that stuff all the time however if you're using your phones which you should be because you need the my disney experience app to do basically anything at disney world these days bring your fuel rods these are portable external batteries um, Disney has fuel rod stations where you can, if you use up a fuel rod, you can actually exchange it for like a dollar for a new one that's fully charged. We don't think we're going to need that. Our phones are brand new because we just got new phones. The batteries are great. And with these, we expect we'll be able to get through each day just fine. But bring your fuel rods because you have to use your app for everything in Disney World. Dining reservations, changing up dining reservations to a different time, trying to get your reservations for um, a boarding group for Rise of the Resistance. You're going to need your phone and your app, so it's smart to bring um, portable chargers. Bring your fuel rods. Next, ponchos. Okay, it is going to rain at least one day that you're in Disney World if you're going in the spring, summer, or fall, <laughs> okay? Pretty much, unless you're going in the dead of winter, it's going to rain. Usually, rainstorms at Disney um, and in Florida in general, remember I used to live there, they are intense, but they are short. It doesn't often rain and rain and rain all day long, okay? You might get a cloud burst, you know, at one random time during the day, it'll rain cats and dogs for 20 minutes, and then the clouds blow away and the sun comes out and you get back to your day. So for that reason, I actually don't recommend trying to carry an umbrella with you. Umbrellas, even if you get the small ones, they're pretty heavy. They take up a lot of space in your small, lightweight uh, park bag, right? And so what I tell everyone to do is go to Walmart or the dollar store and buy these cheap disposable emergency ponchos. No, they are not the most earth friendly. And I wish that they had like biodegradable ones. <laughs> Unfortunately, biodegradable and rain don't go together. So it is not the most earth friendly system, but we bring these. They are incredibly lightweight. And if you check your weather app on your phone and you see that, okay, after this, you know, hour of rain, we're supposed to have sun for the rest of the day. You can throw this away. You do not have to carry a wet poncho around with you the rest of the day because it's disposable. It's an emergency one only. Just, this is the way to go. They're lightweight. We buy several of them and for each of us and throw them in our suitcase. And if we use one, we put a, a new one in our bag for the next day. We are not anticipating a ton of rain, but who knows? Florida weather is crazy and changeable and who knows but these are the way to go the ponchos at disney world are really expensive so are umbrellas don't buy them at disney world whatever you use bring them with you but these are the most lightweight and the most convenient option we have found they work great and then when the rain is done for the day you just throw them in the trash and you don't have to carry around a wet poncho with you all day long so emergency disposable ponchos we have like i think we're bringing three each just in case but you know do what you gotta do last thing last little tip you don't have to bring a water bottle you can but water bottles are bulky and they, they if they're full of water they can be heavy 
okay? If you can't stand drinking plain water, bring one of those little Mio squeezers so you can flavor water, but there is free water all over Disney. Every restaurant, quick service, um, every quick service restaurant has free water in a jug. I'm not, I haven't been back to Disney World since COVID, so I'm not sure how that may have changed since the whole COVID situation, but my guess is they still have the free water available. But Disney does not always have straws. I'm not sure if they've gotten rid of straws altogether or if there are certain places you can get straws, but if you are someone who needs a straw to drink your drinks, that's me, I like straws, you're gonna wanna bring a reusable straw and I love these. We found these on Amazon. They come in their own little pocket and they are fold up silicone straws. Boing, boing, ta-da. And so you don't get that metallic taste. I hate metal straws. I hate that metal taste. They fold up. You can see they've got these like ridges so that you can fold them after you're done using them. Slip them in here and it keeps them clean. They, the caps magnetize closed. It keeps them clean and tidy. They also come with a little um, squeegee on a spring, on a metal spring, so you can clean the inside of your straw um, when you're washing it. And then it snaps up and you can either use the carabiner on your bag or you just throw it in your bag. So I have one and my husband has one um, because we are straw people and a lot of theme parks, Disney included, doesn't they won't always give you straws anymore. So also small, lightweight, compact. That is your mantra. That is your mantra with Disney World. Small, lightweight, compact. So that everything can fit in your little park bag. I think those are all my tips. Comment down below if you have other tips and tricks for first timers at Disney World or if you've got others to add to mine. Maybe I haven't heard something that you know that will be a game changer for me even though I've been going to Disney since I was a little kid. I always want to hear more tips and tricks so leave them down below if you have a great one. Um, we are so excited. We cannot wait to be back. We're so excited for a week of rest and relaxation and sleeping in and no little people needing me to cook them lunch or do school with them. Um, we're so blessed that my parents are coming out to stay with our kids for the week. So even that's going to be stress-free for us. We know that they're in good hands and I'm just, we can't wait. It's two weeks away from right now. When you guys see this video, it'll be one week away and we're just I'm just champing at the bit. I cannot wait. So anyway, that's our Disney World trip. I hope that was helpful. Maybe you learned some ways to save a little money, renting DVC points or buying give Disney gift cards ahead of time and getting cash back for them using, you know, a cash back credit card, whatever it is. I hope that this was helpful. Um, I hope that these tips and tricks helped you out. Let me know if you are currently planning a Disney trip. Um, and yeah, any tips and tricks you have for me or for other viewers would be great. All right, guys, that's it. I will see you in a week or two with another stitching video. Obviously, I won't be able to do one next weekend because we'll be on a trip and probably the weekend after too because we'll be coming home that day. Um, but in two to three weeks from now, you'll be able to see another video of my stitching. So fear not, we will be getting back to our regularly scheduled programming very soon. All right, guys, take care, have fun. Uh, if you're heading to Disney soon, have a magical time and I'll catch you guys later. Bye.